Hello everybody, how you doing? This is Mr. Douse, and on this video I'm going to talk about right triangle trigonometry. This is the part 2 video. Uh, if you haven't seen the part 1 video, I highly recommend watching it. You can go to my website and track it down. Uh, but this part 2 video, I'm going to talk about setting up trigonometric ratios uh, as a fraction and as a decimal. And then I'm going to move on to my third video, which is going to be finding angles and then so on for my other videos after that. Uh, and so when I'm talking about trigonometric ratios, I'm talking about sine of an angle is equal to the opposite of a hypotenuse, or cosine of an angle is equal to the adjacent side of a hypotenuse, or tangent of an angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent side. And uh, if you don't remember, there was a shortcut that I talked about on the last video. It was so katoa, so katoa, where we have sine is opposite of hypotenuse. So again, so remember the first letter and each of these words is, is going to be abbreviated for so. Then we have a ka and toa. And so if you can't remember these trigonometric ratios in your homework, remember so a katoa, and it might help you remember these trigonometric ratios. Uh, but for this particular problem, set up the trigonometric ratios for this triangle, well, we need to know what angle we're focusing on. And so this little theta here is representing an angle. Well, that is the angle that's not the 90. So this guy right here is going to be the theta in these problems. So I'm going to write down sine of 53 equals, we'll get to the, the numbers here in a moment. Let's move on to cosine. I have cosine of the angle, which is 53 degrees. And then we have tangent of the angle is also 53 degrees. And so a lot of my students forget that we need to have an angle after the sine, cosine, or the tangent. Uh, and since we're focusing on the 53 degree angle here, then that 53 degree angle is going to be the angle for the sine, cosine, and tangent. Now we have sine is opposite over the hypotenuse. And then notice we also have the adjacent side. Well, we need to identify on this triangle what is the opposite side, the adjacent side, and the hypotenuse. And it's really easy to do. Uh, first of all, what is the hypotenuse on a right triangle? It's always opposite the 90. It's always the longest side. Uh, and then for this particular problem, we're focusing on the 53 degree angle here. What side is opposite of this angle? Well, this guy here. So this is the opposite side because it's opposite the uh, angle we're focusing on. And so we have the hypotenuse. We have the opposite side. The third side we label in trigonometry is the adjacent side. And so for this particular problem, we can now set up the trigonometric ratios and then move on to the next problem afterwards. So sine is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Well, opposite is 4. Hypotenuse is 5. So this is 4 over 5. And so if I was setting up the trigonometric ratio on this triangle for sine, it's sine 53 equals 4 over 5. And then I'm done here. That's it. Uh, what about the trigonometric ratio for cosine? Well, that is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, which is the A over H, which is 3 over 5. And so if I was talking about the trigonometric ratio for cosine on this triangle, it's cosine 53 is equal to 3 divided by 5. And then finally, the tangent uh, of the angle is opposite side over the adjacent side. Again, the angle is 53 degrees. The opposite side is 4. The adjacent is 3. And so this is going to be 4 over 3. And so this is sine, this is the cosine, and this is the tangent trigonometric ratios for this particular problem. And, and then that's it. I'm not going to plug anything into a calculator right now. And that's it. So we have another example problem that's going to go a little bit more in depth here. Uh, it's also going to be a little bit more challenging. It says set up the trigonometric ratios as a fraction and as a decimal, round decimals to the nearest ten thousandth. I'll get to this when I get to this particular problem right here. So let's just start setting up the trigonometric ratios. Now notice this is sine of angle A. So this is A right here. This is tangent of B. Uh, and so I'm going to be going back and forth between these angles, A and B, and so that's going to mess with my trigonometric ratios. Uh, and so um, I'm going to write down so a katoa. So ka toa, and that will help me remember what the trigonometric ratios are for this particular problem. Uh, for example, sine of angle A, well this is angle A, sine of angle A is going to be the opposite side of the hypotenuse, so what numbers can I substitute in for the O and the H? Well if I look around here, the hypotenuse is always the longest side. Uh, opposite of angle A, opposite of angle A is, is the 12. And then so hypotenuse opposite, this has to be the adjacent side. Uh, but for sine, I'm only caring about the opposite side and the hypotenuse. So that's going to be 12 over 13. And so the fraction for sine A is 12 over 13. 
Uh, in essence, I just did this problem all over again. Uh, but again, notice we don't have an angle here. I'm substituting in A because A is going to be the angle in this particular problem. Uh, now, I need to make this a decimal. How can I do that? Let's type it into a calculator here. So I need to do 12 divided by 13. And I need to round this to the nearest 10,000th. If I think about, think about 10,000, 10,000 has how many zeros in it? It's got four zeros in it. So the nearest 10,000th is going to be four decimal spots. And so on this particular problem, four decimals is back one, two, three, and four. So that gives me a 0 0.9230. But notice this seven is after the zero, and that's going to round it up. And so this is actually going to be a 0 0.9231. So 0 0.9231. This is 12 over 13th as a decimal rounded to the nearest 10,000th. Uh, and so hopefully that makes sense. If not, you might need to ask a teacher or, or rewatch that part of the video. Uh, now I'm going to focus on just the problems that have an A in it. So we have sine A here. I'm going to skip the B's here and for a moment. You'll see why. I'm going to jump down to cosine of angle A. So cosine is the ka, it's the adjacent or the hypotenuse, a over h. And the adjacent in this problem is the 5 over 13. And so this is the fraction for cosine of angle A. And to round this to the nearest 10,000, let's plug this in our calculator. 5 divided by 13. And I get a uh, back four spots, 1, 2, 3, 4. You see how this is a 1? It's not a 5 or higher, then this is going to stay as a 0 0.3846. So 0 0.3846. So that is uh, the answer for cosine of angle A. And so um, so the fraction and the decimal are equivalent of each other. They're just uh, This is just a fraction and this is the de a decimal equivalency of the fraction. Uh, and so you're going to have to do this for particular problems uh, depending on what your teacher is asking for. Uh, let's move on to tangent B now. Now I'm going to erase all this that I've been doing here because on this particular problem now, we're now focusing on a different angle. I'm going to focus on, on B. So if I focus on angle B, what is the hypotenuse now? Hypotenuse again is still always along the side, opposite the 90. Uh, but what is opposite of this angle here? That is this side right now. So 5 is now the opposite. The 12 is now the adjacent. And so these swapped. Uh, this was the opposite and this was the adjacent for this angle, but since I'm moving to a different angle, the opposite and adjacent side swapped places. So if I go on here for tangent of angle B, uh, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So what's the O over A in this case? That's 5 over 12. And if I round this to the nearest 10,000th, what is 5 divided by 12? Uh, back four spots, it's 0.4167 because this 6 is going to round this up to a 7. So 0 0.4167, 0 0.4167. Uh, now let's move on to cosine of B. Uh, that is cosine is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, so A over H. Uh, the adjacent is 12, hypotenuse is 13. So this is 12 over 13. And if I go to my calculator and I plug this in, 12 divided by 13, um, that gave me actually the same decimal from above here because this is 12 over 13. Uh, but let's just round it here anyways. 0.9231 because this 7 is 5 or higher, so it's going to round this guy up. Uh, so that's a 0.9231. And then moving on to sine of angle B, that is the uh, opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse, the opposite is 5. And the hypotenuse in this case is 13, so 5 over 13. And again, notice it's the same thing right here, so it should be the same decimal. But if you just want to double check it and, and verify it, we can do 5 divided by 13 in your calculator. And, uh, and I get a 0 .3846, 0 .3846. And so you're going to have to do this on some problems for your, your, your geometry teacher. They're going to ask you to convert the trigonometric ratio as a fraction or as a decimal, or sometimes both, and this is how you do it. Anyways, hopefully this helps you understand uh, right triangle trigonometry a little bit better, and have a good day. Bye-bye.